This is my living room. Uh, I'm actually a single mom. I've been single for years. So I've got two boys and a helper. So there's four of us. This is the kids' room. So initially, the rental here was actually started with 1K. Subsequently, like about 1.2. Then 2022, it increased to about 2005. In September, my landlord decided to just drop a bomb to increase the rental. Now she was telling me, you know, outside market rate is around 4K. Rental prices of HDB flats have been soaring over the last two and a half years, reaching an all-time high in 2022. In this episode of Talking Point, I'm investigating the impact of soaring rents. How is it affecting all of us? I guess you could say Pongo is one of Singapore's most popular non-mature residential towns. I mean, it's kind of new, it's got good amenities, and it attracts many young families. After the rent hike bombshell, 37-year-old Catherine is now flat hunting in the area. Can you tell me what is your current situation like? Um, I mean, now I'm in the midst of divorce and I have to rent a place to stay. Most people will say that, oh, you could rent a room instead of a whole unit. I would prefer Congo because my son's school is nearby. So what is the maximum, the, really the maximum you can afford right now? At the moment, probably it's 3K. Catherine has visited four homes in Pongo, but median rents here have risen by up to 50%. And a four-room flat can command up to 4,300 Singapore dollars which is more than what she can afford. So she'll be trying her luck next in Tampines, which is closer to her office. While Catherine continues her hunt for a home, I want to know what is happening in the heartlands. Where else are we seeing such high rental increases? Uh, okay, you brought a map. map and, uh... Sing Tian Fu has been tracking rent prices across the country. I'm meeting him in Clementi, one of the oldest residential towns in Singapore. Clementi, the medium monthly rental is about $3,200 2022. Compared to last it? year, it's about 2004, so it's 33% increase. Clementi is a traditional, very, very popular area right. for renter because this area is very close to tertiary institution, mm. so it attracted a lot of expatriate and also foreign students. It's a mature estate and very close to city centre. That's right. So the supply is always constrained. Where have we actually seen rents increase the most in Singapore? The Woodlands and Bawang in the yeah. north have seen the bigger increase in terms of money renter. Let's look at Woodland. The four-room average medium renter increased by about 58%. Sembawang is a smaller town uh, in the north, but the total percentage increase we see actually the biggest by 62%. The north has become popular among the people looking for rental housing, partly because uh, it's much more connected because of the opening of downtown lines and right. the multi line. Okay. So you see this area become more uh, popular. This is also closer to Johor Bahru. A lot of workers from Malaysia prefer to stay in the north. Every single town across Singapore has been hit by increasing rents, with prices rising non-stop for the last 30 months. Two years ago, Mohan Sandrasegaran saw something unusual happening in Singapore's HDB rental market. Today, he is one of the most widely quoted researchers on the topic. Why are we seeing rents soar in such a big way? Broadly speaking, what we have narrowed down is these factors that are actually causing the rental market pressures in the HDB market. Right. Let me start off with the pandemic's challenges. The circuit breaker measures led to a pause in the construction. There were also travel restrictions, which uh, disallowed foreign workers to come into Singapore. Okay, so no manpower. Yeah, so. correct. But then you might be wondering, how does a lack of completed flats actually place an upward pressure on the rental market? If I can't move into my flat, I have to go and rent the flat from somewhere else, right? So those eager homeowners who are waiting to collect their keys to move into their new homes, they are one of the primary drivers 
who are placing an upward okay. pressure and not forgetting about the private home buyers. So the number of private properties completed also dropped. People who bought private homes were also left stranded and turned to HDB flats for a more affordable housing solution in the interim. Then you talk about the booming resale market too. I see that's yeah. another area. The HDB resale market actually uh, started to grow annually between 2019 to 2021. Mm -hmm. So there was an increasing demand for HDB resale flat. Right. At the same time during this period, more flats uh, actually reached their minimum occupation period. So as the sellers of these flats, they noticed that you know, there's a demand for resale flats. So instead of renting out their flats, they decided to put it up for sale. Right. In essence, restricting supply in the rental market. I saw you put uh, property cooling measures too here. Due to the booming resale market, the government actually introduced property cooling measures. Yes. One of the major factor was the wait out period to buy a non-subsidized HDB resale flat by a private property owners. Previously, it was only six months. Okay. So what happened was last year, they decided to increase it to 15 months instead. So they had to sell their private property unit. Okay. So during the waiting period, they have to turn their attention to, once again, the rental market. The last factor is navigating mm. endemic living. As the COVID-19 situation uh, improved in Singapore, the government decided to relax the border control measures. Yeah. This led to an increase in number of foreign workforce that were coming into Singapore. We also saw a return of international students as well. As the demand for affordable public housing increased from many different groups, rents began to soar, pushing HDB rents closer to those commanded by condominiums. As this pressure mounts, huge problems are brewing for tenants. On the day of the viewing itself, we went down and then he didn't show up. As more renters chase a smaller supply of flats, it's become easier for some to take advantage of the situation. Hello! Hey, Hello. hi. Hi, hi, hi Steve. Come in, come in. Felix Lim has been renting a room in this four-room flat for the last two years. His lease was due to be renewed in January. This is my room, my okay. whole space. But in November, his landlord suddenly dropped a bombshell. His rent would increase by more than 40%. It was not an increase he could afford. Felix had two months to find a new place. I went to look for units and I found another unit nearby, which is actually the building over there. Okay. I found the listing online. Wow, th these pictures actually look quite nice. Yeah, so the pictures look really good. There even is a floor plan. He said that it was a fully furnished unit, DBSS, everything. So rental price per month is... 3350. Three, 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 the price was good too? The price was good, not too cheap. So it wasn't unbelievable. Okay. So then he said, you need to sign a letter of intent to secure a viewing because there were 10 people queuing in front right. of you. So if you want to secure a viewing and cut the queue, you have to pay the first month's deposit and then advance month of rent, which normally what? wouldn't happen. I got a little skeptical, so okay. I tried to ask around some yeah. friends yeah. and I have a friend's mom who works in the same company. So I oh. checked this person's license and everything. I checked it on the CA registry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the mom said this is a legitimate agent working in the company. So okay. in the end I did. I paid everything. How much did you pay? One month? Two, two months. So two I months. paid six thousand seven hundred dollars. Wow! And then you arranged to meet up for a viewing, right? Yes. On the day of the viewing itself, 
we went down, mm -hmm. me and one of my co-tenants, mm -hmm. and then he didn't show up. So okay. what happened was we actually managed to get up to the floor itself, to the unit, okay. and then we knocked on the doors, ring the bells, no one was right, there. Right. But we kind of were able to peek through the okay. edge yeah. of the window, and that was when we saw it was a bit messy, boxes everywhere. It was supposed okay. to be fully furnished. So when I saw that, that was when I thought, Oh no, did I get scammed? Right. And then I got more anxious. So then I kept calling and everything. No one showed up still. I went online and I found another contact number from the same agent. And I called that number, that was the real number. And then the actual Ooh, agent picked up. Yeah. I see. So what had happened was, this guy had pretended to be the legitimate property agent. Yes. Then when the legitimate one picked up, he said he's been receiving calls already, so be careful. But I told him... It's, <laughs> it's too late. late. <laughs> it's too late. Oh my gosh. Okay, okay. Felix reported the scam to the police, but was told that apprehending the scammer could take months, and it was unlikely he would ever get his money back. With money loss and unable to afford the increased rent on his current place, Felix was forced to leave. He is moving in temporarily with a friend in Bukit Panjang, paying $700 a month. While this is lower than what his landlord is asking for his current place, the location isn't ideal, as his daily commute to and from work is now much longer. In 2022 alone, 3.9 million Singapore dollars were lost to rental scammers. In March and again in August last year, the Singapore Police Force issued a warning about the resurgence in rental scams, particularly those which involve scammers impersonating legitimate property agents. Terence Ang is a content editor with a real estate company. He's witnessed scams become increasingly common in the industry over the last two years. So I've sort of put together some tools you can take a look and tell me whether they are real or fake. Today, he sent me a test. So this is a WhatsApp message. This thing, yeah? Hi, Floor. Okay, everything sounds normal. Being on such high level, you can be sure that brightness and breeziness are a given in this home. <laughs> okay. Wow! The pictures look great. But I'm very skeptical when the pictures look too nice. So Steve, can so, you tell me whether this so, is I mean, real? I gotta admit, from everything that I've seen here, it sounds quite normal. This doesn't scream to me as being fake. So I, I would actually say I could imagine it being real. So this is actually fake. <laughs> yes, yeah. as you mentioned, the pictures look extremely nicely furnished, too well renovated. That could be another red flag. Especially if it's a, a unit that's been around for a while. Yep. So there's normally wear and tear and the pictures normally shouldn't be too new. Alright, Steve, I've got one more here. Yeah, the guy's phone number. Yeah, so this is presumably the agent. Okay. Right? <laughs> it looks okay to me. It's just a phone number and a name. How can you tell whether it's fake or not? So what I want to tell you is everything here is fake. Everything here is fake? Wow. Yes. You will have to authenticate the, the, the agent that you're dealing with. You need to have a conversation and then he'll probably give you a phone number. You can take that phone number, you can go to the CA registry, the Council of Estate Agencies, and then you can find out whether that number is registered. Oh, so yes. I can type in the guy's mobile number? Yes. And it will show whether he's listed as an agent? Yes, that's right. You can see that uh, the agent's name, his registration number, the, uh, the agency he's, he's with, okay. and then you can click on view more details. See his oh, so even has his face. photo. His photo, yeah. His registration details, company and name, license number. What he's sold, what he's rented ah. out. Oh, wow. Yeah. Also, I can check on his work performance, so to speak. His That's past right. track record of That's serving right. places, renting out places. Yes. Oh, okay. I yeah. knew that. So this is one step in ensuring that you close off any potential vectors that a, a scammer may... Okay, you know, and, and this like you, website is open to anyone? It's public. public? It's public. Wow. Unfortunately, as scammers become more devious, simply checking that an agent's license number exists is not enough. 
What many scam victims fail to do is to also authenticate the agent's identity, such as asking for a photo to match the one that's on the registry or even asking questions about previous properties they have sold and matching it with online records. These potential pitfalls add another layer of stress to an already tricky process, especially for those in seemingly hopeless situations like Catherine. After failing to find a flat near her son's school in Pongo, Catherine has decided to try her luck, this time in the mature estate of Tampanese. So Kat, it's been a few weeks since we last met. How is your search coming along? Can't say it's fantastic because oh. I've been viewing a few units. It's either the price is too steep or the condition of the house is pretty bad. And there's a lot of competitors, a lot of like people also looking, so they don't mind raising the price. Just grab a seat here. How worried are you about your current situation now? Being sure one to ten. Ten. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can't afford to let my kids go roofless, right? Things haven't been positive, but I just have to keep trying. However, high prices and a tricky market are not deterring a growing demographic of renters. And if you're thinking that this overheated market doesn't apply to you because you don't rent, think again. Despite the risks in soaring prices, there's still a group of people who want to rent. And they are only in their 20s. How long have you been renting in this apartment? It's been a year. Okay, and uh, three flatmates? Yeah, there's three of right. us. So we share like a collective rent of around like 3,200 right now. Five room HDB flat. Five room HDB flat? Yeah. yeah, quite spacious. I mean, and Kat, you're not one of the, the flatmates, right? Oh, no, no. But I think like next year onwards, I think I'm going to start looking okay. into it. But I think now, like Elman and I were talking about it, the prices keep going up. Honestly, it's very scary because like, I'm just looking at like the neighbouring places, right? It can go upwards to around like 5,000 and that's... Wow. Okay. <laughs> well, so I, the I'm... same size unit, right? Yeah, same size unit with the similar conveniences. La. Uh, are you fearful <laughs> that when your you know, contract is over, they may jack it up to that price? I'm pretty sure they will because if everybody else is going to be renting at the same price, right? right. Then why, why, why wouldn't you want to jump at that kind of opportunity? What's your limit? How far do you think you can go? Well, I, I do have to be quite prudent like, and like, reassess all of my different options, but I also know that I have to pay a bit more. Maybe right now I'm paying one, let's say 1.5 will be my max. Okay. It's quite a huge chunk of my salary. Like. So why are you renting? I was living at home, but once I started growing up, I started university, when I started going to halls and yeah. stuff like that, that's when I really knew that, hey, I need this. Okay, so you want your own space. You I feel that's important for yeah. you. What about you, Kat? You're living with your family but you want to move out? I mean, one is because I want to see what it would be like to live with my partner, like just the two yeah. of us. But I think also, I just want to understand also like, when you live by yourself, you are forced to be more independent, more responsible, mm. and just, I think, take into account a lot of things you don't really take into account when you live with your parents naturally. And among your friends, are there many others who are also living on their own renting property? Uh, definitely a pattern among a lot of Singaporeans who want to really have their own space. You would see a lot of couples who will want to, like for example, Kerala, to really try living out on the first time first by renting. The more rare cases are the ones who really just move out of their family for the sake of their mental health. And what do you think you've had to sacrifice in order to pay your rent? It's a huge financial sacrifice and I feel there's a lot of things where I really have to forego. Uh. Basic things like insurance and savings for a rainy day are not something he can set aside money for because he needs to pay his rent. This trend of single millennials renting could eventually add another pressure point on Singapore's rental market. So while rents are going up everywhere, I'm assuming this only affects a small segment of the population, right? After all, almost 90% of HDB dwellers own their own homes. So they are safe from an overheated market. Well, I think I'm in for a shock. This recent headline caught my eye. Higher property taxes for most homeowners from 2023. Nicholas Mark is a familiar face on local TV, frequently invited to share his outlook on Singapore's property market. I want to find out how we calculate our property tax rates. 
property tax is dependent on the annual value multiplied by the tax rate. You might want to ask what is yeah, AV. Exactly. What is AV? Well, the annual value uh, is in theory the rental that a property can generate in a given year. What you could possibly rent out your flat for. Yes. Take for example a flat with an annual value of $27,600. Now to calculate the property tax, what you do is you look at the tax schedule. Mm. The first $8,000, there's no tax. Okay. Right? So the next $47,000 is taxed at uh, 4%. Right. So if we take this $27,600, the first $8,000 is, is tax. So what we're seeing is that the next, if we get this number, 27,600 minus 8,000, 8, we will have $19,600 okay. multiplied by 4%. Property tax payable will be $784. Rental over the last 12 months has gone up by 25 to over slightly over 30%. So let's say we will have an annual value of 36,000. Precisely. And this time, the tax rate has increased, which means you will have to pay another $300, which means your total tax rate will Eight, come nine, to 1180 $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, $1, dollars From 784 to 1000 almost 1200 Wow, that's quite a bit more. So if rents continue to go up, which means my annual value will increase, and then therefore I end up paying more taxes. Yes, you could. You know, it never occurred to me that a hike in rents could affect property owners like myself too. But now that I think about it, I just received my property tax bill and I will be paying more this year compared to previous years. And now, I think I know why. With no end in sight for Catherine's flat hunting journey, she's now faced with the harsh reality of having to stay put and pay the rent increase. I drain my savings. Literally, I have zero savings already, which is why I start to other alternative, like delivery job. And it's very straining because I got um, some injuries and it actually make it worse. So after that, I mean, rental is still continue going out. Then I sold off my car to make ends meet. Contrary to what I initially thought, rising rents are affecting not just a small group of people, they're affecting us all. Leaving renters scrambling for a roof over their heads, raising property taxes for homeowners, and proliferating scams that take advantage of desperate home seekers. For now, prices don't seem to be coming down. But as construction on flats resume and more homes are completed, Singapore's rental market could stabilise at some point. But with the most optimistic timeline being the end of this year, it still looks like a lot of people will find themselves in difficult housing situations for many more months ahead.